PLC eUniversity website. What is a PLC? This is the 24th in the Factory Rat series, and in this episode, we're going to use basic instructions to do simulation for the conveyor application. One of the major challenges in doing classroom education or education on your own at home, if that's what you're doing, is the trainer. In other words, the PLC, the lights and switches that you have to simulate with. Now, this is what we've used so far. We had four photo eyes and we had one motor that we were controlling. Most simulators have six inputs and four outputs or something like that. Typically, inputs to outputs is two to one in real applications. Any more than six inputs and four outputs is very difficult to keep track of which switch and which light does what. However, we're going to need more because we're going to go to more conveyors with more photo eyes and more motors. In order to do that, and still stay within the minimum number of switches and lights that we have, we're going to have to do some simulation, some virtual I.O. So we're going to have to come up with something that simulates push buttons or simulates photo eyes in order to operate this system that you see in front of you. Our goal is to run this in full automatic cycling cartons across these conveyors, buffering cartons, multiple cartons on each conveyor. We still need manual control of these conveyors and we need system control. So here we're adding five sets of start stop buttons. One for system start and stop that controls the whole system and then another start stop button for each conveyor. I see 10 push buttons there. We have eight photo eyes. That's a lot more than six inputs. So we're going to have to make some of these inputs virtual. So the code we're going to do in this episode has to do with managing bits and memory that ordinarily would be controlled by I.O. We want to keep the photo eyes, or as many as possible, actual I.O. that we can control with our switches on our demo unit, our training unit. But the start-stop buttons are all going to have to be virtual push buttons. That is the code we're going to do in this episode. Throughout your hands-on learning process, you're going to have to manipulate the state of bits and values in the memory of the PLC from your keyboard. Some of the bits you can manage with switches on your learning station. For instance, look at rung two. Conveyor one stop push button, conveyor one start push button. Those are both actual inputs, input zero and input one. But most trainers or learning stations only have six inputs and four to six outputs. With more complicated simulations like we're we're doing, we need more inputs than we have, which means that we're going to have to manually, from the keyboard, toggle bits on and off and pretend that they're input. Although input zero here, that's a real input. Up here we have a push button and we've assigned it to B3 word 2 bit 0. Well the only difference between B320 and input 0.0 slash 0 is that this bit is controlled by an actual input. This one's not. So we need to be able to toggle these bits. And remember when you toggle a bit on, it goes on. And when you it stays on until you toggle it off. So that's two toggles in order to simulate a momentary push button. To that end, we have logic here that's going to simulate you pressing and releasing a push button by doing one toggle. Now I have the timer set at two seconds so you have ample time to observe it. I'm going to toggle it on. So it stays on and then after two seconds it goes back off. I'm using the timer and the timer timing bit to keep that bit on. That's that bit right here. I turn it on and by the way I don't have to toggle it there. I can toggle it here. It goes on and of course a toggle from your keyboard is a one program scan thing. So it's a very quick actuation if you like. In the TON instruction using the timer timing bit because when we toggle this bit on then the timer timing bit goes true and it keeps it on for two seconds. Down here, we're going to simulate a normally closed button momentarily pushed. So right now, the stop push button shows that it's on. The start push button shows that it's off. This one shows that it's on. Remember that a stop push button is normally wired up using a normally closed so it's fail safe. So if I toggle this off, I want it to go off for a length of time then come back on. So I'll toggle the bit. Two seconds later, it comes back on. What it does, it allows you to toggle push buttons with a single toggle, and it goes on and right back off after a reasonable simulated length of time. It also gives you another example of timers, the relationship between the timer timing bits and the timer data type. 
and the stop push button is the most interesting one. And remember, anywhere that I toggle this bit will work. If I go to over here and open up B3, see this is B3, 3 slash 0. So I go to B3, 3 slash 0. See right now it shows it's on. If I toggle it here, it's the same result. Any place I can see B330, if I toggle it, it's going to go to the opposite state, whatever that is, and then the timer holds it in that opposite state until it times out. Now, you don't need two seconds, so we will eventually reduce that. So we're going to take this logic, and we're going to use it to control the state of those push buttons. That means that we would replace the stop and the start push button in this rung of logic right here with B320 and B330 zero or something like that. Now that you understand how this logic works, I'm going to add four more pairs of rungs like this. We already have two rungs for the start and stop push button for the system start stop. I need to go add eight more rungs, four more pairs, stop and start buttons for conveyor one, two, three, and four, and I'll be back. Remember, the reason we're doing this is because we don't have enough actual inputs. So we have to simulate push buttons for the start-stop circuits with bits from the B3 file. The reason that we went through the trouble to do all of the logic that creates a temporary depression of a normally open or normally closed is because when you're doing simulations, if you toggle something off or on and you forget to change it back and you continue on running your sequence and your simulation, it gets all messed up because you forgot to literally release the push button. So we take care of that for you. So I'm going to start the system. Right click, toggle, and after two seconds it goes off, but system enabled remains in place. And notice that we have system enabled in front of all four start stop circuits for the conveyor motors. We left the fault in there from the previous lab. I'm going to right click, toggle. You see that the button is momentarily on and then back off. We'll start all these conveyors. Toggle, toggle, toggle. They're all on and all the buttons are released. Now I can stop one by toggling the stop push button and it goes back to on. I can also toggle the stop system push button and it drops out all the conveyors. So this is a system enable rung and if this rung sets that bit true then you can turn the conveyor motors on. And remember that we have all of these rungs up here. Each pair is what simulates the press and release of a push button. And that's how we use timers to simulate a momentary push button action initiated by the toggle function in the software.